Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to wrap up Unit 4, Section 9, where we're going to learn how to balance some more complicated redox reactions. Now, there are some redox reactions that take place in the presence of acid, and as you look at these three, you'll notice that some of them look a little bit unusual. For example, the dichromate ion ends up being turned into chromium 3 plus ions and the permanganate ion ends up being turned into manganese 2 and the nitrate ion ends up being turned into nitrogen and monoxide gas. Well, the question is how do you balance these half reactions? How do you balance, for example, a half reaction where there are four oxygens over here but there aren't any oxygens on the right side? Well, there's a very special way to do that. So in this one we have iron 2 ions are added to an acidic solution containing dichromate ions, producing iron-3 ions and chromium-3 ions. So once again, we're going to start with the iron-2+, and it says we're also adding it to dichromate. So we write the formula for dichromate ions. And in this problem, it is kind of nice. It tells us what the products are. We're going to make iron-3+, and chromium-3 ions. So let's balance these. Now the first half reaction is fairly simple to balance. We have a plus 2 versus a plus 3, so we just need a, a single electron on the right side. Over here though, this is much more complicated. How do you balance that? Well, there's a step-by-step -step process. So let's go through those steps. The first step is you want to balance everything other than hydrogen and oxygen. So as you look at this half reaction, you'll notice that there are two chromiums right here. There's only one chromium on the right side. So I'm going to put a two right there to get those chromium atoms all balanced. Now, in my second step, I'm going to balance the oxygen atoms. And the way I do that is I notice I have seven oxygen atoms right here, but I don't have any on the other side. So I'm going to balance this out by adding seven water molecules over here just like this. And now all of a sudden I have the same number of oxygen atoms on both sides of the arrow. Uh, the reason I can do this by the way is that we are in a solution. And so we know that water is present and so water must be participating in this process in order for this to work. Now the third step here is to take care of my hydrogens because you might notice that I just solved my oxygens but now I have created a hydrogen problem. So the way I do that is I balance the hydrogen atoms by adding the appropriate number of hydrogen ions to the other side of the arrow. So in this case I just added 14, you know 7 times 2 is 14, so I have to add 14 H pluses to the other side like this. Now the reason this works is that this is an acidic solution and since this is an acidic solution I know that there are some hydrogen ions that have to be swimming around in the solution and they must be participating in order for this to work. Well now I can balance my charge because all my atoms are balanced. So sometimes this can be a little bit tricky so be very careful in how you balance the charge. On the left side, I have a total charge of positive 12 because I have plus 14 and minus 2 right there. So that's a plus 12. Over here on the right side, I have plus 6. So the way I balance out plus 12 versus plus 6 is I have to put 6 electrons on the left side over here, just like this. So now I'm ready to add these two half reactions together and like always I want the electrons to disappear when I add these together and that's not going to happen unless I multiply uh, half reaction number one by six. So if I do this now those electrons will fall out, disappear when I add them together. So I get the overall balanced equation that looks like this. And just so you know I have uh, I've basically omitted the the states, the, the, the aqueous and the liquid over here just for brevity's sake because I don't have enough room, but you can see the overall balanced equation for this redox reaction. That's all you have to do. This is a rather complicated process, but with some practice you can get the hang of it. Now as you can see, the first half reaction is oxidation because we are losing electrons. The second 
half reaction is reduction since we're gaining electrons. Let's take a look at another example here. In this case, we have a skeleton redox reaction written. We're going to need to separate these out into the half reaction. So in the first half reaction, I'll have the chlorine uh, process. And in the second half reaction, I'll have the iodine process there. So in the first one, we have the chlorate ion that's being turned into the chloride ion. Now, please remember that the first step is balance everything except for hydrogen and oxygen. Well, th that's already balanced. We have one chlorine on both sides. So we can jump right ahead to balancing the oxygens. We have three oxygens over here. We don't have any over here. To balance that, I need to have three water molecules right on the right side here. Now to balance my hydrogen that I just added, I have three times two, which is six. So I have to add six H plus ions to the left side, right, uh, just like this. So now I'm ready to balance my charge. So if I look at the charge, I have a total charge of plus five on the left side, a plus six right here and a minus one, so that's a positive five. And on the right side, there's a negative one total right here. So the difference between a positive five and a negative one would be six. So I need to add six electrons to the left side right here. Now on the second half reaction, I want to start by balancing the iodine atoms. So I have two iodine atoms here, only one right there. So if I stick a two right there, now my iodines are balanced. Let's take a look at the oxygens. I have six oxygens right here, three times two. And so to balance out the oxygens, I need to add six water molecules to the left side, just like this. So now the oxygens are good. Next, I want to look at the hydrogen ions. So I have six times two, which is 12. So I need to add 12 hydrogen ions over to the right side. And now I'm ready to look at my charge. On the left side, everything is neutral, it seems. So that's a zero. But over here on the right side, I have, there's a plus 12 right there and negative two. So that's a, a, a charge of plus 10. So zero versus plus 10 means I need to place 10 electrons in this position on the right side right here. So now I'm ready to add these together. We look at the first one, we see this is a reduction since we're gaining electrons. And we're losing electrons in the second one, so that's a, an oxidation. So now as we add these together, you might notice that uh, first of all, we need to make these electrons disappear because six electrons here and 10 electrons there will not cancel out. So in order to make this work, it looks like I'm going to need to multiply the first half reaction by five to, to bump those electrons up to 30. And I'm going to have to multiply the second half reaction by three in order to make that work. So now those electrons are going to disappear. Uh, you might notice that there are some other things that are going to cancel out when I add these together. I can cancel out 15 water molecules on both sides. That brings this down to three. And I can, I can also cancel out 30 hydrogen ions on both sides. So this will go away and it will leave six hydrogen ions over here. So when I write the overall balanced equation, this is what it's going to look like once everything that can be canceled out has been canceled out. So this one was a little bit more complex just because of so much more that was going on. Now, is there any way that we can make this even more complex? Well, there is one way. We can actually take a look at a basic solution. Now, in these other two examples, we've had these redox reactions that take place in acidic solution. It seems like most redox reactions do take place in acidic solution, but sometimes they take place in basic solution. So how do you solve that? Well, let me show you. It's actually pretty much the same as it was before, just a little step that we have to add in at the end. So once again, I'm gonna separate these uh, into two uh, logical half reactions. I have the manganese uh, half reaction in the first one, and I've, I've put the carbon and nitrogen in the second one. So in half reaction number one, the manganese atoms are balanced, but the oxygen atoms are not. So I'm going to balance the, the four versus two 
by adding two water molecules to the right side. So that balances the oxygens. Next, I have four hydrogens versus zero on the left side. So I'm going to add four H pluses on the left side. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, you know, if it's in basic solution, we can't really have hydrogen ions in a very large amount, can we? Well, we're going to fix that here at the end. So just kind of kind of sit tight on, on this here. So let's balance the charge now. We have a positive 4 and a negative 1, so that's, that's positive 3 on the left side, versus a charge of 0 on the right side. So to get the charge all balanced, I need three electrons over here, just like that. So that makes this first half reaction balanced. Now the second half reaction, I have the carbons and nitrogens balanced, but the oxygens are not. I have one on the right side, so I need to add one water molecule on the left side to balance out my oxygens. So now I can balance these two hydrogen atoms in the water by placing two hydrogen ions on the right side, just like this. So now I'm ready to look at my charge. On the left side, I have a total charge of negative 1. And on the right side, I have a positive 2 and a, a negative 1. So that is a positive 1. So negative 1 versus positive 1 means I need to place two electrons right here. So once again, I'm gaining electrons in this half reaction. So this is uh, going to be a reduction. And I'm uh, losing electrons here, so that's going to be an oxidation. So now I'm ready to add these together. And as you can see, my electrons do not disappear, so I need to multiply half reaction number one by a two, like this. Just double all the coefficients. And then in the second half reaction, I need to triple all the coefficients like this. So now my six electrons will cancel out. And you might notice that three water molecules will cancel out as well with three of those, bumping this down to one water molecule. And I noticed that six hydrogen ions will cancel out on both sides. So this will go away, and I'll be left with two hydrogen ions right here. So this is my overall balanced equation at this point. Now, like I said, since this is in a basic solution, I can't just leave these two hydrogen ions sitting around here because you're not going to have a whole lot of hydrogen ions in a basic solution. So to take care of that, I'm going to counteract this by adding two hydroxide ions right there. Now, whenever you add something to a certain side of an equation, like an algebra, for example, you have to add the same thing to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add two hydroxide ions to the right side, just like this, so I can counteract that. So now, when I add these together, I need to realize that the two hydrogen and the two hydroxide ions are going, into, are, are going to turn into two water molecules. I can actually mark this out and write that as two water molecules. And this water molecule right here is going to cancel out with one of those right there, leaving me with just one water molecule. So now, when I get my overall balanced equation, this is what it's going to look like. A little bit more complicated, isn't it? It would be unusual that they would ask you to do something like this on an AP exam, but this is something that you are expected to do in general chemistry. So. This is an important skill to be able to do if you're moving forward in chemistry. Hope you learned something from this uh, rather lengthy video about balancing uh, complicated redox reactions. If you did, please uh, shoot me a thumbs up. And this actually brings us to the end of Unit 4. So I hope to see you in my next video in which we're going to start Unit 5 and jump into the rates of reaction, chemical kinetics. Thanks for watching.